Mr. Chairman, I also want to just, I cannot help, when I read this morning um, this statement in uh, this article in the Washington Post saying AIG to pay millions to top workers, I got to tell you, it made my heart ache. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I, and I just have to comment on this, and I hope you will hear me, Mr. Kuskeri. I don't think AIG gets it. I really don't think they get it. They don't get that Americans are suffering. They don't get that City Corps laid off 10,000 people. U.S. Steel, 675. Morgan Stanley, 10% of his workers, approximately 44,000 people are employed, so that's quite a number. GM, 3,500. DHL, 12,000. Circuit City, 6,800. National City, 4,000. And I could go on and on and on. And these are announcements that have been made in the last month or so. My point is simply this, that I think AIG has gotten to the point, and I, and I, and I, I got to believe that they just don't get what's happening in the rest of the country. AIG has come to this Congress, and I did vote for the bailout, by the way, and I voted for it because my people were suffering in my district. I voted against it when it was House, voted for it when it came from the Senate. But the fact is, is that the people in my district are losing their houses, too. The people in my district are also losing their jobs. And we, and, and I, we have an AIG that will go on these lavish junkets. And as you probably know, they, they, because of this Congress, they canceled 160 junkets. And let's say that they average 200000 to 200000 to 250 apiece. That's a lot of money. For, some, for a corporation that are dying, that is supposed to be dying, and would not be in existence. And then we open the paper today to hear that they're going to pay millions as if it's, they, everything is just the same as it was to their employee, employees and bonuses. Well, the problem is, is that a lot of the people that we represent won't even have a job at Christmas time, and damn sure won't have a bonus. And so some kind of way, I hope that some, we can get through to AIG and other companies, because it's bigger than, than AIG. I don't want these companies coming to the Congress with a handout, thinking that they can take the money, do whatever they want to do, and then, you know, have their little parties, have a good time, get their manicures, pedicures, massages, pay $1,600 a room, and come dancing back to us and say, give me more, when the American people's dollars are being wasted. It is very upsetting. So, Mr. Chairman, this is an important addition to the full committee's investigation into what went wrong with the financial markets. We knew over years ago that our economy was headed for trouble when the housing bubble began to burst. The first victims were everyday Americans who had been sold loans they could not afford from dishonest brokers. We did all in our power to keep people in their homes and to keep the economy afloat, but we were fought at every turn by this administration. We asked the administration what authority they needed to keep the market from going bust, and their response was a non-response. They said we should let the markets be free. Let the invisible hand work out, work it out. Well, we know now what the invisible hand, that the invisible hand has failed. Wall Street has come to us, cashmere hat in hand, to ask us for $700 billion bailout to recover funds lost from risky deals it made. When times are good, those risks resulted in windfall profits and people got rich. But now that the tables have turned, the United States banking system is turning to the American taxpayer to bail them out. And the administration is fully behind them. This administration wants to privatize Wall Street's gains and socialize Wall Street's losses. Sadly, the situation is at such a fever pitch that we simply cannot afford to ignore it. The risky bets made on Wall Street were so complex that every single segment of our economy could fail if we, we do not bail them out. Further, we are seeing with the news of rippling effect in the European and Asian markets, the global economy is also on the brink of failure. It is for these reasons that I held my breath and voted for this bailout measure. I had initially voted, I'm almost finished, Mr. Chairman, I had initially voted against it 
because I thought the bill did not include sufficient oversight and did too little for Main Street and a lot of the people that we're going to be talking about today. But as with Katrina, the war in Iraq, and any number of small issues this administration, smaller issues this administration has been charged with addressing, Congress has come along to clean up the mess. Unfortunately, we were not 